In this video, we're going to talk about mole ratio, and we're going to solve some problems related to it. But let's understand it first. So consider this reaction. Let's say that nitrogen gas reacts with hydrogen gas to produce ammonia, which is uh, NH3. And let's balance it. So we have two nitrogen atoms on the left side. So we need to put a 2 in front of ammonia. And now we have 6 hydrogens on the right side. 2 times 3 is 6. So therefore we need to put a 3 in front of H2. Now the coefficients, which are the numbers in front of the reactants and the products, gives us the molar ratio between compounds. For example, notice the numbers 1, 3, and 2. So what this means is that one mole of nitrogen gas reacts equivalently with three moles of hydrogen gas to produce two moles of ammonia. That's the ratio, but it doesn't have to be these numbers. For example, you can multiply everything by two. So therefore, two moles of nitrogen gas reacts with six moles of hydrogen gas to produce four moles of ammonia. Likewise, 3 moles of N2 reacts with 9 moles of H2 to produce 6 moles of NH3. Now, here's a question for you. Let's say if we have 1.5 moles of N2. How many moles of H2 will react with 1.5 moles of N2? So if you want to find out how many moles of H2 reacts with N2, you can convert it. Start with what you have. So we have 1.5 moles of N2 over 1. Our conversion factor is the molar ratio between N2 and H2, which we can use this. So for every 1 mole of N2 that reacts, 3 moles of H2 react with it. Notice that the unit moles of N2 cancel. So it's going to be 1.5 times 3, which is 4.5. And 4.5 is right in between 3 and 6. So that number does make sense because 1.5 is right between 1 and 2. Now let's start with this example. Propane reacts with oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide and water. Now here's the question. How many moles of oxygen gas are required to produce 14 moles of water? So feel free to pause the video and work on this example. Now the first thing we need to do is write a balanced chemical reaction. So propane is C3H8 and it reacts with oxygen gas which is diatomic and that's O2. Carbon dioxide is CO2 and water is H2O. So we have three carbon atoms on the left side. So therefore, we need to put a three in front of CO2. Now notice that we have eight hydrogen atoms on the left. To balance the equation, we need an equal number of hydrogen atoms on the right side. So two times four is eight, so therefore we need to put a four in front of H2O. Now notice that we have four oxygen atoms in the four water molecules and six oxygen atoms in the three carbon dioxide molecules. So on the right side we have a total of 10 oxygen atoms. So what number do we need to put in front of O2 to balance it? Well 10 divided by 2 is 5. So we need to put a 5 in front of O2 to balance the chemical reaction. And so now everything is balanced. So now, at this point, we can answer the question. How many moles of oxygen gas are required to produce 14 moles of water? Well, let's see if we can ballpark the answer. The ratio is 5 to 4. So let's say if we have 10 moles of O2, 10 moles of oxygen will react with 8 moles of water. If you simply multiply 5 by 2 and 4 by 2. If we multiply 5 by 3, we could say that 15 moles of O2 
will react with four times three, that is 12 moles of water. Now let's multiply this by four. 20 moles of O2 will react with four times four, 16 moles of water. Now we're looking for 14 moles of water. 14 is right in between 12 and 16. So therefore, how many moles of oxygen would give us this result? It has to be between 15 and 20. So since 14 is in the exact middle of 12 and 16, then this has to be 17.5. That's going to be our answer, but let's prove it. So first, let's start with what we're given, and that's 14 moles of water over 1. Now let's use the conversion factor to convert between H2O and O2. The conversion factor is the molar ratio. It's 5 to 4. So you can make this statement. 5 moles of O2 is chemically equivalent to 4 moles of water. Because for every 5 moles of O2 that react, 4 moles of water will be produced. Now, since we have moles of water on the top, we need to put it on the bottom of the second fraction. We want the units moles of H2O to cancel. So on top, we have to put this part of the conversion factor, 5 moles of O2. And so now we just need to do the math. So let's get a calculator. Let's multiply 14 times 5, which is 70, and 70 divided by 4 is 17.5 moles of O2. And so what this means is that 17.5 moles of O2 is needed to produce 14 moles of water. And it's just math. That's what it is. Now let's move on to our next problem. Here is another one. Ammonia... NH3 reacts with oxygen gas to produce nitrogen gas and water. So here's the first part of the question. How many moles of oxygen gas is required to react completely with 11 moles of ammonia? So go ahead and take a minute and work on this example. So let's write a reaction first. So we have ammonia, NH3, reacting with oxygen gas producing nitrogen gas, which is diatomic like O2, and water. So let's begin by balancing the chemical equation. So initially, we can see that we have two atoms of nitrogen on the right side. So that may indicate that we have to put a two in front of any street. And so we have six hydrogen atoms. So we may need a three in front of water. So we have six hydrogen atoms on both sides. But notice that we have an odd number of oxygen atoms. And to balance it, we're going to have to put a fraction in front of O2. So this will give us three atoms of oxygen on the left and on the right. So to avoid the fraction, we can double everything. So let's make this a 4. So if we have four atoms of nitrogen on the left, we need to put a 2 in front of N2 to balance it. Now we have 12 hydrogen atoms in the left. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So we need 6 in front of H2O. Now we have 6 oxygen atoms. And so we need to put a 3 in front of O2 because 3 times 2 gives us 6. And now everything is balanced. So now we can start with part A. So we have 11 moles of NH3. We need to convert it to the moles of O2. So let's start with 11 moles of NH3. The molar ratio between NH3 and O2 is 4 to 3. So for every 4 moles of ammonia that reacts, 3 moles of oxygen reacts with it. So now we need to put the moles of NH3 on the bottom. So we're going to put 4 moles of NH3 based on that number, and 3 moles of O2 based on this number. 
And so we want the units moles of NH3 to cancel. And now we can just do the math. So it's going to be 11 times 3, which is 33, divided by 4. So the answer is about 8.25 moles of NH3. Now let's move on to part B. How many moles of water are produced in this process? So we we'll still have uh, 11 moles of ammonia. So let's convert that to the moles of H2O. So let's start with 11 moles of NH3. Now the molar ratio between NH3 and H2O is 4 to 6. So for every 4 moles of NH3 that reacts, 6 moles of water are produced. So once again, let's put the 4 moles of NH3 on the bottom so that those units will cancel. And let's put 6 moles of water on top based on that number. So this is going to be 11 times 6, which is 66, divided by 4. And so that's 16.5. And this should be NH3. This should be O2, by the way. And here we're going to have moles of H2O. So 11 moles of ammonia will produce 16.5 moles of water. And 11 moles of ammonia will react completely with 8.25 moles of O2. So that's it for this video. Hopefully this gives you a better understanding of how to solve molar ratio problems and stoichiometry multiple problems.